Hello everyone, my name is Master James Morejo from JK Martial Arts here in Tucson, Arizona. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Minatoshi style Korean Samgakdo sword from Sword and Armory based on the recommendation of Chosun Ninja, Master Greg Park. Uh, and so let's begin. Okay, first we're going to begin by comparing the cheaper Sword and Armory Samgakdo sword with a more expensive uh, sword that I purchased in Korea many years ago. Uh, you can obviously see right off the bat that it is a little shorter uh, in length than the other one I have. Um, and it's also a much lighter and we can also get into the blade geometry and some of the things here in a second. This other sword is a sword I purchased about 10 years ago in Korea. It is uh, manufactured by Sehyun Dogum. Um, at the time it was about 1,100,000 won which is about eleven hundred dollars uh... the same swords that i see online from the same manufacturer that they're selling online for head and Kondo practitioners is around sixteen fifty to eighteen hundred dollars for the same sword uh... these days um, and in comparison the sword and army armory um, minatoshi style korean samgakdo was a hundred and fifty dollars uh... and uh, all i'm reviewing today is that it is a good practical cutter for an economical price uh, for someone that wants an entry level sword um, that can actually do as advertised. Um, I'm going to actually get into the blade geometry here. Uh, this is the one manufactured from Seiyan Dogum. Um, as you can see it has a, a nice blade polish. You won't see this on the lower end swords um, uh, but uh, it's, it's been a nice sword for me. I've had some really bad cuts and it's still um, very good sword. still cuts very well. Um, you see it has the home which the Sangbakto does not have. Um, I think some people I've noticed are saying Kyorcho uh, here in the States, but uh, they call this blood groove in Korea when I was at home. Um, and this is what they call a Yukakto, so six-sided blade. So you see two on the top, two here, and then it also tapers down towards the end. And you see the length there. Uh, in comparison, this is the, uh, and I haven't wiped the oil off yet, off the uh, Sangbakto. You see it's much shorter. It's a little wider. This one was actually a lot wider when I bought it, but I had a, one bad nasty cut that I had to have it shaved down. Um, it was probably just as wide when I first bought it, but you see there's almost no resistance on the sides of the blade. There's no blood groove, um, and it's very thin in comparison uh, when you see the two blades side by side. Um, you can see how much thinner it is uh, compared to the two. Okay, and uh, you notice like the finer amenities, the nicer fittings, um, a silk wrap versus a cotton wrap. Um, you know, um, the nice brass fittings versus some of the lower end ones. So, um, but I mean, this is, like I said, a much more expensive sword. Um, and all we're testing today to see is that uh, this will, you know, is a good economical cutter for a low price. Okay, so the first thing we're trying to cut today with this uh, Samgakdo is the, uh, just some paper. Um, just to see how it goes, and then we're going to move on to some tatami mats. Pretty good to me. Now we're going to move on to the uh, double mats. Uh, so this is two mats rolled together and uh, see how well this sword does.
problem with the double mats. And these ones weren't even rolled that good. You can see they're a little loose here. So, but uh, still a pretty good cut. As an added bonus, I'm going to try myself a little uh, kanja bup. Okay, this one I am going to cut with my Seihan Dogon, uh, Yukakto style Korean blade. Um, I, this one actually has a 3 quarter inch wooden dowel in the middle. Um, just for people that don't really have a lot of sword screens, that Samgakto blade style is not designed to cut bamboo or hardwood like this. And that's why I'm using uh, the more expensive blade, uh, just so you know the difference. Can you stop me, This is the one I cut with a wooden dowel on it, so you can see that um, I think the actual tatami mat doesn't cut as cleanly with my sword as it does Yukakto, but there's more to catch on. It's got the blood groove and everything else, but you see that it just cuts nice and uh, through the wood in the center. So this best simulates like cutting an arm or something like that with a bone in the middle. Pretty picture. So this is going to just sum up my review for the Sword and Armory Samgakto Minatoshi uh, Korean style sword. Um, let me say before I wrap up that uh, I have wanted a Samgakto for about 10 years since uh, I was living in Korea. We used to go to the Baegijangs and I used to see how fluid and fast these cutters were um, and I've always wanted one. The one that I particularly want is around $1,800 um, and this is a nice exactly as advertised of uh, what Chosun Ninja advertised to us, that it's a nice economical cutter at a low price for an entry level cutter. Uh, when I purchased my original sword, I was uh, in the military, I was an E3, uh, two striper in the Air Force, so I didn't have a lot of money for two and three different swords, so I got a nice all-purpose cutter uh, from Sehyun Dogum in Korea. Like I said, these same swords in the States are selling for around $1,600 to $1,800 right now. Um, and uh, you can see the cutting that that tour did. Um, but uh, all in all, um, you know, for things like paper and tatami mats, this is a very economical cutter. Uh, it is exactly what Chosun Ninja advertised. It's not an amazing sword, it's not the best sword in the world, but uh, it's a nice economical cutter that does the job um, if you want to cut thin targets. Uh, um, and that's my review. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, and uh, thank you. Hit on.